As of lately, I've been kind of obsessed with glass in my design work, but not just any kind of glass, it has to be a very specific kind that has all this RGB splitting and dispersion going on. To get this look, I use a mix of Blender, which is a 3D software which you can actually pick up for free, and Photoshop, which is, you know, very much not free, but yo, if, if you look hard enough, I don't know. Now, it requires a bit of prep work to get this all set up, but it can be done in a few fairly simple steps, and I'm going to show you how I do it and get results like these. We'll start in Photoshop where I have this unfinished Brunson design that is prime for some 3D glass shenanigans. And I know exactly what I'm going to use. It's gonna be this New York word mark that the Knicks had on their jerseys all of last season. And this will live just here behind the uh, screaming JB man in the foreground. Now, for this whole thing to work, you're gonna to need to start off with a vector version of whatever it is you want to be glass. Fortunately, this is already a vector, so I'm gonna tap into it and open up Illustrator. In here, we can see all the different parts that make up the word mark, but I only need the top line. So I'll delete these and get a selection of these letters. Then I'm going to copy and create a new document to paste them into. I'll change the color so we can actually see what's going on. And then we need to save out as an SVG file. So I'll save this out, call it whatever you want, and make sure you select SVG down at the bottom. I don't know what any of these settings mean. I don't ask questions. I just leave it as default and we can click OK. Now we can get ourselves into Blender. It looks a bit daunting. I get it, but bear with me because there's some setup that we need to do before we get to the cool stuff. First, we want to go to this panel over here and make sure our our render engine is set to cycles and not Eevee. Then we want to come down here under film and make sure transparent is turned on along with transparent glass. These settings are just going to make sure our glass is actually see-through in the final render. And now we can just go over and import our SVG file, navigate over to the folder it's saved under and import. And you can see there it is. Each letter is a different curve. Just select all of the curves like that, right click and hit join. I also like to do this. I right click again, go down to set geometry and select geometry to origin. And that will just snap your imported SVG to the Center. Now you want to press R on your keyboard for rotate, then hit X to rotate on the X axis, and then you want to type 90, and that will rotate it 90 degrees. And there you have your front facing logo. Then you can zoom out, hit S for scale, and you can scale it up a bit. Next, we want to go about actually making this 3D. So we we'll go over here under the curves tab on the right, and then here under geometry, we can change the extrude value to 0 0.04. This might be a bit too chunky for my liking, so I'm going to actually go with 0 0.02, and that's perfect. Then go over to profile down here and I'll change the depth to 0 0.001 and that just gives us a little bevel which will really look good once we add the glass material. Talking of that, let's set up our panels. I like to move this one up like this and then drag from the bottom corner over like that and I can set this left one to a full render view so I can see the texture in real time and how it's all looking and stuff like that and then it can also act as my camera view and then this one on the right I can move around and position stuff and it won't affect my camera. Also this panel down here you want to change to shader editor and this is where we'll actually make the material. You can already see it's blank at the moment and you can just select that standard default texture here. Lastly we need to create a camera so shift a go down to camera and you can see it's added that in. Move it back a little bit and then in the left panel you can click zero on your keyboard to see what the camera sees or this button over here. Then with your camera selected you want to open up this side panel go to view and click lock camera to view. This will allow you to move your camera around the same way you move your viewport. It just makes positioning stuff super easy. I'm gonna set my camera up to 2700 by 2700. You can make yours whatever's gonna work with your design. And then I'm gonna pan out until the whole word mark fits in the camera. Now, with all that prep work finally out of the way, it's time to actually make stuff look cool and look like glass. So you wanna select your curve and then delete this principled BSDF down here. We ain't gonna need it. Then hit Shift A and search glass BSDF. Listen. Don't ask me what BSDF means. I just know that the stuff works and I'll put this over here. Then shift D to duplicate and make two more of these. Shift A, search add shader, and then we'll drop that in and make another duplicate of this one too. And then at these green dots, you wanna connect the glass to the shaders like this. Drag this one up here. Actually, you wanna make sure this one is connected to the lower green dot. Then connect your first shader to your second shader like that. Then finally, connect the second shader to the material output box. And just with that, you can already see we have a nice kind of looking glass material but we can do a lot better than that. In the first glass box we need to change the color so hit RGB and turn off the green and blue channels. Turn down the red and blue on the second one and then the red and green on the third. Then where it says IOR set the red box to 1.4 leave the green box as it is, and then set the blue IOR to 1.5. 
Now shift A again and search for a mix shader and you can add that in between your second add shader and the material output. It should automatically snap in like this. Then we need to shift A and search glossy BSDF and connect that to the new mix shader like this. Also setting the roughness to 0.1. And finally search Fresnel or Fresnel. I don't know, this word, and connect it to the gray dot here. Now, we actually have the texture already made, we just can't really see it yet. And to fix that, we need to add a light. So shift A again on this area over here and click area light. And you can already see it's doing some cool stuff over there. So I'll scale it up and come down to the light settings on the right and turn the power up to 1000. Now we can really see how the glass is gonna look. I also like to come over here to the light constraints add object constraint, dampen track, click minus Z, that is important. And then you wanna set your target to be your 3D object. Mine's just called curve, so I'll select that. What this does, it then allows you to move your light around in 3D space and still keep it locked onto your 3D logo or text or whatever you've imported. And it's a super easy way to light your scene. Now this is a case of lighting everything how you and one rev. I'm gonna have one light down here and I'll duplicate and add another one up at the top. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see all this RGB splitting and dispersion that's going on. You see it, this is the good stuff right here. This is exactly what we need. Another good thing about these lights in 3D software, if your design already has some strong directional lighting, like say I have a strong orange light on the right side like this, I could just change this light to orange and now you can see how nicely it just lights up all of these right corners and edges. There's endless options with Blender Man, so like just play around and see the stuff that works best for your design. For this example, I'll just keep the light white and now I pretty much think we're ready to render. So just go over to render in the top panel and click render image and then you wait because depending on what computer you've got and what exactly you're trying to render, this can take a minute. Like I'm talking go get a snack and go touch grass kind of minute. So it's no joke. But I'm gonna jump back in after it's finished. And there you go, that's the final render. Then you wanna go up to image and save as. Make sure you're saving as a PNG with RGBA. I'ma turn the compression down and then save the image. Now, back in Photoshop, this is how our render looks. You can see so far it looks good, but it doesn't look great. So let's go ahead and convert that into a smart object and drop it into our main design so we can make some tweaks and really make this look as good as possible. With it in our comp, I'll go straight over to the blending modes and this is where it will vary slightly from design to design, depending what's underneath the glass effect. But what I found works best is either hard light, vivid light, or linear light as the base. Sometimes soft light, but mainly the other three. With this one, I'm thinking linear light is giving me the best results, so we'll start there. And I'll add a curve to up the highlights just a little bit. Then we'll duplicate the layer and change this one to soft light. And I'll adjust the curves again to give it a very subtle S curve. We'll make another duplicate and we'll set this one to linear dodge. And again, I'll adjust the curves to a much more dramatic S shape, essentially getting rid of the darker shades of the glass layer. We'll also drop this one down to about 70% opacity. Then I'll duplicate one more time and this one will set to color dodge and I'll adjust the curves again to that slight S curve shape. Now we've got something that went from kind of flat and boring looking to a much more convincing glass look. Also personally on the linear dodge layer, I like to turn the saturation up just to really emphasize those split RGB colors. And listen, I know the glass might look cool, but you can see straight through it and nothing underneath the glass is being affected by it. But there's an easy fix for that. You wanna turn off all your groups and layers above the glass, including the glass layers themselves. Then press Command Option Shift E and that merges all the visible layers into a new flat layer. Let's convert that into a smart object and drop that into our glass group. I also put that into its own group and we call it dispersion. Then holding shift, I wanna click one of our glass layers to get a selection of that shape and I'll click the mask button to add that as a mask to our dispersion group. From here, if I option click the mask, we can actually get a better look at it. We want this whole shape to be filled in. So I'll press command L to bring up levels and move these right sliders all the way over to the left. And that gives us a much better mask. And I mean, you can go in and knee and everything up and make it all look perfect. But for this example, this is fine. And with our new mask in place, I'll click back into our merge layer smart object and add a go Gaussian Gaussian blur. Yo, this word, it's a, it's a blur. <laughs> well, I can't say that word. Now it's up to you how strong you wanna make this look, but I prefer it stronger, so I'll turn it up to 15. Something else I like to do with this blur layer to give it just, you know, a little bit extra, a little bit extra spice. It's kind of the same thing we done in Blender. I duplicate this layer two times, double click into the first one, leave the red channel on, but turn off the green and blue. Same thing on the next one, but I leave the green on, then turn off the red and blue. And you already know for the last one, we leave on the blue, but we turn off the red and green. 
screen. Then with that I can nudge these layers over until I get something that looks good. After some messing around this is what I ended up with and it just adds a little bit extra to this glass look. Finally you can also add in a solid fill. Change this to like a dark off blackish kind of color something like this. Turn this down to about 20% opacity and it gives the glass some weight or like some kind of density you know. And I mean you can even change the color of this layer and change the overall look of the glass. Say you want this to be an orangey kind of color something like that. You could set that change the blending mode to like maybe screen mess with your opacity a little bit and then you've got some color glass too there's a lot of possibilities with this technique i actually used these same steps to finish off this design and ended up with this which you can check out properly over on my instagram let me know if you want to see a full design breakdown for this obviously you know without all the glass stuff but everything else I can kind of walk you through it. And of course, I use my lens flares and my LUT packs in this design, which you can find in the description down below. But that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Tag me on socials at Ethan J Design with the stuff that you create using this tutorial. It'd be great to see what you guys make. YouTube thinks you'd enjoy this other video of mine here. So, you know, there's that. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Yo, I just confused the crap out of me. Let me try that again.